Hello everyone and welcome to another episode and yes this is May from Overwatch. Br brand new model I literally just got to my catalog this month um, and I am going over some support work here. The reason for this is because I've had some folks ask me in the recent past what you know, I what can they do to make the gaps less or work better when they're working with printed parts and they're trying to make their printed parts come out as good as possible? What can they do? What's the what's the best way that they can make that happen? Now, the interesting part is is that there are many ways to support a part, and there's many ways to do it that you can make it logically work or you know functional. There are ways to support a part that are going to make it work really well, though, and one of those methods is, of course, using the shape orientation method. Now, we talked about this a couple of months back, and we talked about the principles of shapes. 3D printing is no different. The torso that I'm working on here is technically an oval shape, which makes it in more of like a circular category. Now, yeah, sure, the back there has got a little bit of a weird bend in it, but for the most part, this is a circular shape. <clears throat> And what you're going to want to do is kind of treat it like you would a circular base. You're going to want to do a double row in the front where you've got your you know initial support contact. And then you're going to want to create a ring of supports around the actual torso base. Then you're going to want to do a little bit of filling in on the, on the, on the inside of that border to allow all of that material to come out really well. You are probably going to have to do some sanding around the edges and stuff like that. But for the most part... This is going to wind up giving you very little gapping. The reason for that is because the material is going to print where it's supposed to. You're not going to get heavy distortions. You're not going to get warping or any of that stuff that you're not supposed to get. So, in light of that, you need to really, 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 really take a look at how you're supporting your models. Make sure that you're hitting the lines where you need to hit them. Make sure you're hitting the initial parts. Make sure all your islands are supported. Make sure that your perimeters have a border. Make sure that the infill is done right. If you have a hollow model, don't forget to look at the inside of the model when you're doing supporting. Sometimes those areas will need some help to move along as well. So you can't neglect that either. Um, as you see here, what I'm doing is, is I'm just creating the border and then I'm going in and filling in around. And as I draw the layers up, because I'll always do this slice by slice, I will take a look and see exactly where we need to keep adding more and keep adjusting the, um, you know, the amount of supports that are going into the area that I'm working on. So now, obviously, different parts are going to have a slightly different, you know, configuration. Like if you have a square peg, you're going to want to do like a square shape around that peg. Um, it doesn't have to be a perfect square. You just want to make sure that it's getting supported as it's oriented. So if the square is coming up from one of the corners, make sure that the corner is the best supported part. And as it gradually builds itself up, you can kind of lessen the amount of supports that are going to happen as the print is created. Because one of the things you can actually rely on is as the print gets bigger and stronger, it will actually need a little less on the supporting side until it has those, you know, islanding issues and stuff like that that we have to come across and fix. But that, of course, is all just the nature of 3D printing. So anyway, we're going to continue going over this, and I'm going to show you um, a bit more of the supporting I do on the head as well here in just a sec. But as you can see, I try to be as thorough as possible. So if you use the layer slider on the right-hand side of your prepare tab, you can go up and down by using the arrow keys, either you know up or down on the arrow keys, and you can actually go up one slice at a time very, very slowly. And I will sometimes use the mouse and I'll drag it up and down. But for the most part, I like to go slice by slice. And I really like to take a look and see what's really going to happen as the printer kind of forms each part. This is kind of fundamentally important as to how I work my supports in and how I figure out where I'm going to work my supports in. In order to really feel the way that the printer is going to create the model, I need to get in there and do this. Otherwise, I feel like I'm just going to miss something that's really important. And then you're going to wind up with parts of the model that just aren't going to come out right. They're going to be squishy or pancaked or whatever. You're going to wind up with parts that fail and just, just don't come out. So it's ultra, 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 ultra important that we focus on these parts and we make sure that we know exactly where we need to place all these supports and we know that we're putting them in the fundamental key areas that need 
the distribution of balance and weight and mass. So when it's printing, you don't get that distortion, you don't get the warping, and you don't get the weird gapping on your models. And so when you go to do your gap filling and you're seaming, you go, wow, this is so much easier than last time. This is great. I can't imagine. You know, and then you're going to wonder how you did it any other way because now your models are going to take half the time to do your prep and finishing work. And you're going to, have, you're going to get to spend more time painting and, and being creative, which is the fun part. You know, finishing is okay, but you know, everyone wants to get down to the, the painting part. Um, so anyway, this hand will wind up with a lot of little mini supports on it, although it looks crazy. And yes, I'm going to pr probably wind up in here with an X-Acto knife when this is done. It is fundamentally necessary to make sure that this hand is kind of supported like a little porcupine because it's sitting just so ever so slightly above her chest. So it's going to create some gapping there, and that's going to cause a problem if we don't allow supports in there to kind of help the gap along. Um, and these are things that you might miss if you don't go layer by layer. Uh, the the system's going to go, oh, sure, there's an island there, and put one support on each point of it that's going to be an island. Not Probably not going to be enough at the end of the day. Uh, of course, once you're done doing most of your fill-in, you want to make sure that you highlight any of your yellow areas and make sure you get enough supporting on there to protect any of those um, high mass zones that are going to become um, a liability if the print uh, you know, has any issues. If any of the supports fail, you, it's, it's sometimes smart to have a couple of backup supports in the same area. So sometimes if it seems like I'm doing things that are duplicitous, it's because I'm usually aligning up a couple of other supports that are either above or beneath or, 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 or below um, the areas that I'm working on, and that will allow it to kind of make up for some compensation. Um, as we move over to the head, I'm going to go into another, you know, this is again, different shape orientation. So you'll notice that the head starts with like this square peg and it's actually kind of flat. So we're gonna start with like a line and just kind of build our way up. And this will have a you know square pattern to it for the most part, but the supports kind of look like they're all over the place at the minute. Um, but it's gonna be a nice strong root to hold on to the head. And since the head is solid, I think it's very important to make sure that we establish a nice strong root for this supporting system. And that head and that peg is gonna help us hold on to the rest of the piece. Now, of course, the head has a lot of hair and curving in the back, which creates a lot of islanding issues off the start of the print. But for the most part, the circular part of the neck, you want to support really, really, really hard in the back there to make sure that that curve comes out nice and even. And this will make sure that you have a good neck seam on the character. This is another part where you're going to, this is very important to make sure that we work out the seam. If you make sure that that curve is protected and you have a good circular pattern that's going to run around that neck, you're going to have a good neck seam. This is important if you want to make sure that the seam for the neck and the shoulders are going to line up well. Some models don't have things that hide them. Some of them are smarter and put things like necklaces and chokers on the characters, which will kind of deceive you and it really makes it look like the neck seam is, isn't there at all because, well, I mean, the necklace or whatever item is on the character is hiding the neck seam. Um, and these are kind of clever. I've seen that done a few different ways. Um, but the head in itself is a little bit more complex, and sometimes I find myself spending a lot more time working on head pieces or arm pieces or even legs or feet because they have so much more little intricate bits to them that will often stick out or fly off or be independent and just completely islanded parts that will just float for a while before they have the ability to rejoin with the actual model piece. And so in some cases, I'll wind up making a few prototypes of each head because I'll either wind up going too heavy on my supporting or I won't go heavy enough in some zones and I'll find out that I had like a failure on one part of it or you know, a bit of it just gets wonky. So again, you know, this is why kind of testing is important too when you're working with a new piece of uh, material, print, or whatever. Um, so, you know, make sure that you know um, that the format that you're using for the particular type is going to work. There's no way to know that for sure right off the bat. So what you have to do, you got to test. So you take the model, you do your supporting, you run it through a print test. How did it come out? Is everything perfect? Is there anything you could fix? Um, you know, and then kind of go from there. And this is usually how I go through each one of my models and make sure that we have them set up just as they need to be in order for, you know, the gaps to seam up and look really good. Um, the reason, I mean, this is obviously super important to me because we sell these prints. And so I don't want my customers coming back to me and saying, hey, look, the gaps on this are terrible. Um, 
I want them to say, man, the gaps on this are so smooth. I had no problem at all finishing this off and making sure that it assembled. That would make me happier. Um, I don't ever want to hear that the gaps were so bad that they couldn't actually do what they wanted to do with the model or that it was just took them forever to finish it. Um, it would actually be my, my goal in, in, in most cases, I would think, to make sure that their finishing jobs are going to be as easy as possible. And from what I understand, most of the guys who buy from me tell me that the finishing jobs are pretty easy. Um, you know, my personal artist that works with me, as well as a few of my own very, 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 very friendly customers that work with me a lot, have told me that the finishing is quite easy. So it's probably both the combination of the type of supports and usually the fact that they're very um, good materials that are um, strong enough to withstand the pressure without having to be over supported. Um, so I think that's important too. Anyway, we're gonna finish this up. We're gonna cut over to the slice and I will talk to you guys just a second at the end here before we sign off. Anyway, folks, that's it for this episode. Hope it was educational. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope you got something out of it. If you have questions, comments, please leave them in the comments. Don't forget to hit that bell if you want notifications about episodes. Thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments, guys. I really appreciate it. See you all again soon.